Hello, very good morning. I'm Louise Minchin, live from Land's End, when in just over an hour, the torch relay will start right here behind me. Last night, David Beckham was given the honour of lighting the cauldron when it arrived here on UK soil. I'm proud to be part of this. I'm proud um, to be at the, at the games, whether I'm playing there, whether I'm a fan there. You know, it's a proud moment for us. There may be grey skies here, but already people are arriving and you can see them, look at them, excited and lining up to see the first person, Ben Ainsley, who will be that first person to take the torch on its 8,000 mile journey. We will speak to him later. Good morning, it's Saturday the 19th of May. Also ahead, the Eurozone crisis takes center stage as world leaders meet at the G8 summit in America. Chelsea fans head to Munich, hoping to see their team lift the Champions League trophy for the first time. And it's Food Revolution Day, Jamie Oliver's latest campaign to tackle the world's obesity problem. We'll hear from him later. Hello, very good morning to you. Here we are live at Land's End and a real sense of excitement already building for the start of the Olympic torch relay. 8,000 miles, 8,000 torch bearers and it'll go through 1,000 cities here in the UK. In just about an hour's time, it'll arrive here in Land's End in a, in a, in a helicopter. It'll be brought down behind me to that sign where Ben Ainsley will be the first person to light the torch and begin this extraordinary relay which takes place over the next 70 days. But you'll remember, it arrived last night. Let's see what happens. The honor of lighting the Olympic flame on British soil fell to a man who helped bring the games here and hopes to compete in them. The flame lit by the rays of the sun in Greece will now be carried around the UK by 8,000 torchbearers. As many as nine million people say they want to see it. The flame and its three backups had come from Athens in specially designed lanterns safely cradled on the front seat of British Airways Flight 2012. Well, I'm scared to touch them right now because obviously we're, we're mid-air and we've got the, uh, the flame next to us, but it's, um, you know, it's special. They're, it really is. It really is. Uh, you know, a proud moment for, for everyone on board. The golden liveried plane, nicknamed the Custard Comet by London Mayor Boris Johnson, landed at the Naval Air Station at Coldrose in Cornwall to cheers and applause. The Princess Royal, herself a former Olympian, carried the flame from the aircraft. It's only really when the torch comes into your possession and actually gets here that you really realise this is it. Now, this has been 10 years in the making and the start of the 70-day countdown. And the flame is here, finally, the flame on is British here. soil. The flame is here. And today, the flame's journey begins through more than a 1,000 towns and villages to almost every corner of the UK on its way to London. Andy Moore, BBC News. And you really get a sense of anticipation here this morning. I arrived at about half past four and there were people walking all the way in. They had to walk about a mile come from a long way away, but overnighted here, many of them. Uh, we can also see a band, so you can really see people really getting, I don't know, really excited about it, which is an extraordinary thing. Let's tell you a little bit about this journey that the flame is going to go on. 8,000 miles, as I said, it starts here, but let's have a little look at the route it's gonna take. Okay, so it starts here in Land's End and then it heads north, heading, th heading through Snowdonia, then up towards Edinburgh, of course, going right to the top of Scotland, the north of Scotland. Eventually, it will end its journey in London. It's going to spend its first night in London, in the Tower of London, guarded by Beefeaters there. And then, of course, it will be used to light that cauldron in the Olympic Stadium on the 29th of July. This morning here on Breakfast we will be able to speak to some of those torch bearers. We've got one torch bearer here who has actually run with the torch in Greece and also other torch bearers of course including Ben Ainsley who is a three times Olympian gold medalist himself. Charlie, lots to come. See you later.
Louise, thank you very much. Talk to you later on. Time now, five minutes past six. The other news now. Western leaders at the G8 summit at K. Okay. Those are the main stories for us this morning. Brings you right up to date. Twelve minutes past six is the time. Let's go back to Land's End and speak to Louise, awaiting the arrival of the torch this morning. How's the weather for you, Louise? Very good morning, Charlie. Again, do you know what? It's a most lovely scene here. The sun is just coming up. It's almost warm. And there's a beautiful scene of people walking over the heather here, um, making their way so they can be amongst the first to watch this torch relay. And I was here really early this morning, about half past four. There were already people here, which is really impressive. So a helicopter arrives, Charlie, at just about the, just before seven o'clock. It'll arrive where the crowds are, where you can hear that band. And then they will walk down here and bring the torch which is in a special the flame which is in a special little lantern a golden lantern and the torch will be lit here the first torch the first of 8,000 torch bearers uh, Ben Ainsley will, is, will be here I want to talk to a previous torch bearer he's going to be with me all morning helping me through all of this and giving us some sense of history Philip Barker very good morning to you good morning you've carried the torch lots of people turning out this morning why do you think it's special it's difficult to put a finger on it because fundamentally it's such a simple event a piece of metal with a little bit of a flame but it's that flame that comes from olympia where the ancient olympics were you get the sense that so many people have carried it before you you're one cog in a journey that leads to the olympic stadium so i think that's probably why people get so excited about it it's a very emotional thing to do there'll be a few tears i'm sure along the way as people carry this torch mm. because they'll be helping it on its journey and it seems only a week it's only just over a week ago it was lit in ancient olympia in that beautiful ceremony in the glorious sunshine and now here it is in the uk on its way to our third olympic games and what's lovely seeing all these people here is they've obviously come from lots of different places but also pride in cornwall that land's end should be chosen as a place it's a dramatic place to start it isn't it it is a dramatic place and of course with ben ainsley carrying the torch uh, with the sea behind him just along the coast is where he'll be bidding for his fourth olympic gold medal in a few months time and so it's it's one of those things you know in 1948 when they had the torch here it came into dover and the crowds lined the route throughout the night so it's really deja vu because people have been have touched by the torch. All the cynicism about the Olympics will be blown away over the next 70 days as the torch comes through. I've talked to so many people that are so excited about it coming to their town, their moment. That's what they're very much hoping for, isn't it? Well, in just under an hour's time, the fame will be here at Land's End uh, by helicopter, I say, a rescue helicopter, and it will start this 70-day Olympic torch relay across the UK and Ireland. Before it does, though, let's remind ourselves of the flame's journey so far. The Olympic flame was lit from the sun's rays at the temple of Hera in Greece. The flame went out briefly, blown out by a gust of wind, before being relit and transferred to the first torchbearer, the Greek world champion swimmer Spiros Gianniotis. The flame toured Crete, Piraeus, Thessalonica, Xanthi and Larissa in a relay around the Greek mainland and islands. Handing over of the Olympic flame On Thursday, the Olympic flame was presented to the London organisers, led by the Princess Royal ahead of the London Games. And last night, that golden bird and the flame touched down on British soil at the Royal Naval Air Squadron Cultrose in Cornwall. Brilliant. I have with me here the Norris family. Very good morning to you all. Um, how are you doing? What time did you get up this morning? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. And where have you come from? Um, Bishop's Tainton in Devon. OK. And why did you decide to do that, to come down here to see the talk today? So that the children, when they are parents themselves, can say to their children, my mum and my dad took me there on the day. That's fantastic. Yes. yes, this is an iconic location and we really wanted to be here at the start of the torch relay. Mm -hmm. And you are literally right at the start. If we look behind, uh, you have got that position and I hope they're holding it for you. Yes, yes, they natured. promised us that they would. It's yes, quite it good is. nature this morning, It isn't is, it? yes, they're lovely people. 
And will you be following it as well when it comes to near your, your home or not? Possibly, possibly. We'll see how it goes. Yes, that would be tomorrow afternoon, so we'll, okay. we'll try. We'll see how it goes. You might be a little bit tired by then, Mike, and you. We may. There may be other well, things to this, do, but we will try After this, we're racing up to the Devon County yes. show in Exeter, and then we're watching Chelsea beat Bayern Munich tonight. <laughs> oh, goodness, that's controversial. And um, are you looking forward to seeing the torch? What are you looking forward to s about it? Just seeing it. <laughs> Just... I'm never probably going to see this again, so oh, it's that's, going to be brilliant. Oh, that's probably true. Thank you very much for coming to see us. Good luck, and Thank you better go back quickly to get you your space. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, Charlie, um, I have also here one of the Torch designers. We'll speak to him at 6.30, who can tell us all about those, how it's been designed, why it's been designed, and also whether it will be able to stand up to the weather. Luckily, today, it's looking beautiful. Well, it looks perfect for you, Louise. We're back with you a little while later. You'll talk us through the arrival as it happens. Thank you very much. Uh, 18 minutes past six is the time. Jamie Oliver speaking to us about his uh, food revolution. Let's go back over to Louise now. Land's End, the Olympic torch due to arrive there. And uh, Louise, Jamie Oliver was telling me that he is due to carry the torch as it goes through Essex. Oh, that's fantastic, isn't it? We know that Ben Ainsley will be the first person to carry the torch, Charlie. It will arrive here um, just after 7 o'clock. Lots of people here already. It's the most lovely scene. The sun has just risen over to my left there. And I think you can probably see pictures of the crowd here. And rather, it's a rather romantic scene as people walk across the heather to make their way here uh, to Land's End. Um, I think we can show you helicopter shots. We know that the flame as it's called, in that special golden lantern, is on board the helicopter. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you a little bit about it. So it's not a long flight from Culdrose to here at Land's End. The torch bearer who's on board is L Lieutenant Commander Richard Full. They're just, I think, about to take off, aren't they? Aren't they? Which is uh, very exciting. Also on board, uh, Winchman Corporal Justin Morgan and the pilot as well, Lieutenant Chris Whittington. And then what will happen is they'll fly over here in this Sea King helicopter. It's a rescue aircraft and they'll fly over here, they'll land just where those crowds are, so there's no doubt there will be a big cheer when it gets here. Um, and then they will walk down, it's not, a sh it's not a long way, about 100 metres to this sign here at Land's End, which has got a little 2012 specially put on it um, for today. And Ben Ainsley, who I haven't seen yet, but I know that he was pretty busy last night, uh, yesterday, he is of course a three times gold medal winner. He is going to be the first person to carry that torch. They'll light it here, just behind me, and then he'll run up on, on its way. 8,000 miles, 8,000 torch bearers going through 1,000 different cities. Um, I know the helicopter's on its way, and we'll stay with the pictures of that, but if I can also bring in uh, some of my guests here at Land's End. The man who's in charge of organising lots of this is Paul Dayton, Chief, Chief Executive of LOCOG. Morning. Good morning. How did you set the weather like this? First question, know, amazing. If we, if we can pull this off for the next 70 days, we'll be very happy, believe me. Um, we're going to watch the helicopter as it's taking off from Coldrose, which is a, which is a good moment, isn't it, for you to just have the start? of this fantastic relay. Yeah, I mean, we um, welcomed the torch from, uh, from Athens, Athens yesterday at Cold Rose. You know, the guys there did a spectacular job. It was a wonderful reception, and uh, so, as you're right, what better place to start it? OK, just tell us a little bit about proceedings today, because it starts here on Land's End, and look, you can see the helicopter just preparing oh, to take is, off yep. there. Um, it, it, it just does this sort of short flight, doesn't it? A very short flight. And as you've already said, we bring it here, the, uh, one of the crew will bring it down to Ben here, and then Ben will start the, uh, start the whole relay. And what better person to have? One of our greatest uh, Olympians. So there she goes, that helicopter. Tell us about the flame. It's in a little um, lantern. It's in a it? lantern, so it's, uh, you know, think Davy lamp. So it's very well taken care of. That's never going to go out if we can help it. And, uh, and it's from that sort of mother flame that we then light the torch, our beautiful... 2012 torch with the 8,000 little perforations representing all the torch bearers. There yep. it is. She's on her way. On her way. Uh, they must be excited about it. Have you spoken to them? Oh yeah, no, these guys, I mean, they were, uh, they couldn't have been uh, more spectacular as hosts yesterday. They've done a great job and, uh, you know, for us, we, uh, we've just been delighted to be able to start the whole, uh, the whole event at really, a, you know, a, the perfect place. Do you have to, get, have to get special permission to have a lighted flame, as it were, on board the rescue helicopter, or was that OK? That was OK. Well, of course, we brought it on the, uh, on the, on the big plane from Athens uh, um, yesterday, so it, it sits very comfortably and safely 
inside the lamp, and it's only when we're outside that we actually have the, the naked flame yes. on, uh, on our beautiful torch, which uh, we'll get to see a lot of over the next 70 days, I'm sure. Uh, tell us a little bit um, about the torch bearers, because we'll speak to some of them later here on breakfast, but they're from all sorts of places, all sorts of backgrounds, and they've been chosen what, by the public? Well, yeah, they've been nominated by other people because um, people think they deserve the chance to carry the flame because they've been inspirations particularly to their local community. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, you know, yesterday I spent the morning reading the stories, you know, the, the nominations yes, of, of all the people who are running today and, you know, it really does move you. These are terrific people who've given an enormous amount to the community, to their family, you know, they've raised money for charity, they themselves have got through some very difficult things in their own lives. So each of those stories are absolutely tremendous and that's what it's about. Mm. It's about ordinary people who've done extraordinary things and bringing the flame into their own communities. Um, and how important, because you know some people are skeptical about the amount of money um, spent on the Olympics and all the, all the rest of it, how important are these 70 days to sort of I don't know, change things perhaps in some people's minds and build a sense of excitement. I think this is one of the best ways that we actually take the games right out to the people. This is a way for everybody to get involved. As you can see here today, I think everybody in Land's End is very much involved already, even though it's half past six in the morning. And that's what we hope to see right around the country. OK, um, logistics, I mean, it's a major operation, isn't it? Yeah, we have to, you know, keep the convoy moving. I mean, it's, you know, quite a thing, because the, the real objective is to make sure we go to as many communities, over a 1,000 around the country, because you know, we really want to take it uh, as close as we can to as many people. Our plan is to be at least, you know, within an hour of 95% of the population. We have a big celebration uh, in the evenings where people can come and, you know, there will be music and entertainment. So it's not just watching the, uh, the flame. Look at this. Oh. Like ten people deep. Yeah. Are you surprised by how many people here oh. this early in the morning, or were you e hoping for it? Every anecdotal sign I've had from around the country is that people are really excited, and they want to come out and see, you know, the people locally who've inspired them, because it's a great day for them, and they want to celebrate it together. Um, I know that you're busy, man. Just to tell, tell us quickly, um, how many people are involved in this convoy? Because it's going to be quite an operation going through all these villages and cities, yeah. isn't it? I mean, we, we obviously have a group of people who hand over one to the other. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll have there's something like 300 people all together who just make sure that you know the whole crowd can be fed, watered, refueled, kept moving and keep everybody else who's involved entertained. Listen, I really appreciate your time. Paul Dayton, I know you're a busy man. I'm going to let you go. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed for that. Um, so we know in a few minutes' time, we know the helicopter is on its way. The flame is on board that helicopter. It'll arrive here in the next 10, 20 minutes or so. Um, let's look back, though, at the journey that the Olympic torch has taken so far. The Olympic flame was lit from the sun's rays at the temple of Hera in Greece. The flame went out briefly blown out by a gust of wind before being relit and transferred to the first torchbearer, the Greek world champion swimmer Spiros Gianniotis. The flame toured Crete, Piraeus, Thessalonica, Xanthi and Larissa in a relay around the Greek mainland and islands. Handing over of the Olympic flame. On Thursday, the Olympic flame was presented to the London organisers, led by the Princess Royal ahead of the London Games. And last night, that golden bird and the flame touched down on British soil at the Royal Naval Air Squadron Cultrose in Cornwall. It is a fantastic place to be here this morning. Um, you know, Olympians turn up, like Jonathan Edwards. Here he is. <laughs> we'll talk to you in a minute. Let's just quickly look at, we can look at pictures of the helicopter, the flame that took off in the last few minutes or so. We understand that it is going to arrive. Oh, we've lost the helicopter pictures, but we know it's on its way, don't we? Morning. We do. How are you? Fantastic. It's, um, it's been quite a 24 hours. Absolutely. Being at Caldros last night, seeing the flame arrive. I mean, it's... It's, it's when the project goes live in the UK mm. and there's this kind of unstoppable momentum now. It's a huge excitement. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think almost quite emotional as well because I was involved from 2003 with the bids. I think we're so close now. 
Um, and does it make um, a difference to you that you've turned up here this morning? It's early. There's lots of people here. Is that, is that makes it more special, does it? I was here a year ago for the launch raining, of the it? overnight stops, and Carol was here during the weather. She was completely yeah. soaking wet. You couldn't see the sea. <laughs> you think, in a year's time, this is how our torch relay starts. It'll be, yeah, it'll be terrible. Most but this is just, I can't believe, blue sky, no well. wind, massive support from people. Yeah. And, and this is what I think the torch is about, ordinary people coming out to support the, the, the torch. Some amazing torch bearers, both sort of celebrities like Ben Ainsley, who helped us well in the summer, but also ordinary people who've been nominated mm -hmm. by friends, by family, by the local communities. Um, and, you, and also shining a light on Cornwall, because it's just so beautiful here. Exactly, and people are really proud here in Cornwall. Yeah. You can see them, look, it's fantastic, isn't it? Um, how much would you have liked to have competed in the UK? Do you know, I think it's double-edged, because there's so much pressure on our That's athletes. It. Yeah, and I'm sure if you ask Ben Ainsley after his run with his the torch, he'll say, like, I'm really excited about it, but I've never been under more pressure in all my life. Mm -hmm. So it is double-edged. But equally, it's been great to be part of the organising committee, to see what's going on behind the scenes, um, the kind of colossal effort it takes to put on the games and to give athletes the opportunity to compete. It's been great to be part of that. OK, and um, for the torch bearers, what would your advice be? Are you, are you taking it? Are you... I'm doing it in, on Monday, in oh, Ilford, Monday. Ilford, Ilford, where I was brought up, North Devon. Oh, that'd be special. What would your advice be to them when they just take the time and enjoy it, or what would it be? I think exactly. Take the time and enjoy it. It's not a long leg. It's about 300 metres. It'll go in a flash. Um, so, yes, I, I would actually run quite slowly. You don't so have taking to run, do you, really? Well, jog, sort of, you know, <laughs> a bit of a shuffle. Uh, it's an amazing moment. And I always think, you know, this, as we've seen the pictures there, yeah. the flame was lit in Olympia, and there's this continuity all the way through to the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, and you're part of that journey. Um, and what do you think um, for those? You, you talked a little bit about the athletes, haven't you? The sort of intense, in, intense pressure uh, for people like Ben Ainsley. That's going to be good pressure, isn't it? I mean, he's already won three gold medals. But he's never won a gold medal in the UK, and there's a big difference. Um, I mean, my sort of main memory of this is Kathy Freeman in Sydney in 2000. And you think the pressure she was under? She lit. The cauldron she in the opening those ceremony. Pictures, wasn't it? I remember that. It well. was, and but then she was exhausted at the end. She was almost, it, it was almost like she didn't know she'd won. She crossed the line, and it took such a monument, mo monumental effort for her to win that gold medal in front of a, a, a home crowd. Yeah. And I think it will be the same for the British athletes. But Ben will be fine. <laughs> Yeah, he'll be fine. He's, I say he's done it before, but it, will, but it will be a challenge like no other. And I know, um, I know that we don't know at this point um, who's going to be the last person. You must be who my money's on. Yeah, no, you will <laughs> know. Who would you like it to be? Or well, you don't have to say if you don't want to. The most deserving person, and I think, you know, I'd hope if it's an Olympian, say would Seb be Seb. Would but you, Seb, Seb can't do it. I mean, yeah. you know, you go back to Singapore. No, I mean, he's, I think he's chairman of the organising committee. It wouldn't yeah. be appropriate. He's going to run in Sheffield. Which is where he did, you know, he was born mm -hmm. and did a lot of his training. Um, but it might be just some, maybe some, a young person. That's been such a theme for us with London 2012, uh, inspiring young people, getting them excited and enthused about sport. Um, so maybe it'd be a, long, a young person from East End of London who we don't even know. And that, and that, would, that would be nice as well. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, do you think some people, you know, some people are sceptical about the amount of money and all the rest of it. Do you think these 70 days will is part of that whole process of perhaps changing minds or some people's minds at least like, clearly not here because they're yeah. all out already I, mean, I, th I think the thing, the thing to say about the money is that this isn't going on the fireworks of the opening ceremony it's about long-term regeneration of the east end of london and also the money that's spent even on the games that provides great inspiration which we can see is having an impact here so um i think i think it's going to be great value for money but that for all the naysayers, I think when they see the torch come through their community, they see the response. And it's different. It's very different. And then you see all the different projects that have been using the kind of magic of the games to make a difference in local communities. People start to think, oh, you know, maybe actually there's more to this than I thought. Oh, lovely. Really lovely to see you this morning. Thank you very much indeed for your time. I'm sure you've got things to do. And it'll be an emotional moment when you see it, will it? It will be. Oh, thank you very much. Jonathan Edwards there. Oh, so today marks the start of the Olympics torch 8,000 mile journey around the United Kingdom before it reaches the Olympic Stadium in London on the 27th of July. Let's take a little moment to get an idea of the Torches Tour and what's happening to make sure it reaches near to where you live. The Torch starts its 70-day journey here in Land's End. 8,000 torch bearers will carry the Olympic torch through 1,000 cities, towns and villages, passing landmarks like Snowdon, Giants Causeway, Dublin, the Angel of the North, Edinburgh, Stonehenge, and then, of course, it will end up in the Olympic Stadium in London. 
Most of the torchbearers will carry the flame for about 300 metres near to their local community so friends and family can go along and cheer them on. The youngest torchbearer is 12 years old and the oldest is 100. Well, that is the journey. I want to speak to two uh, very important people uh, who are very much involved in this project. Um, they are, of course, the torch designers who I've just managed to grab. It's a bit like that this morning, Charlie. Uh, torch designers, J. Os, Osgaby and Edward Barber. Morning. Good morning. How, How are, you? are you feeling? Very excited. Yeah, are very you? excited, yeah. Um, tell us a little, we, we were hoping you might have a spare torch with you. No, unfortunately not. I think they're all in use at the moment, or soon to be, aren't they? Are Certainly they? the main one. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about um, the design. How you, I mean, how do you even start with something well, like that? that? That's the difficult thing actually and then the main thing is that you've got two aspects you've got the technical side of it which is a given it has to work and then you've got the sort of narrative side so what we want to do is get the story of the uh, relay into the actual design so mm -hmm. we've got a triangular form yeah. which represents the three times the olympics has been in london oh, and then we've got eight thousand holes on the outside of the torch which represent one for each of the runners and also it's eight thousand well. miles in the relay um, while i talk to you we have got live pictures <laughs> look of this rescue helicopter Here it um, comes. in the mist um, over the sea there, um, on its way. I'm just going to quickly look at my watch. So it should be here. I reckon. What do you reckon? In about it's about coming in at about five, five to seven, isn't it? Is it? Oh, is yeah. it coming in five minutes? I can't, I can't hear it yet. Five minutes? No, we can't hear it. That's for sure. <laughs> five minutes. I'm being told, which is very exciting. Um, nice it's being delivered here nice that it's a kind of iconic location in some ways lands End. is that important to you as well uh well it's really it's like where a lot of journeys start don't they here yes it's, absolutely. Uh, well, it's an amazing place for it to start and i think we're going to get the sun as well which would be even more exciting oh, you were telling me weren't you about so eight thousand yeah. perforations holes yeah. what, what what other ideas were you thinking about when you when you made it well we had to make it very lightweight because obviously a lot of the runners are young so yes, you've got 12, 12 year olds haven't we yeah um, also we wanted to make something which felt like a piece of sporting equipment not like a trophy so so it's um, the holes make it very very light, and of course also the holes make it um, dissipate the heat from the flame. So you can hold the handle, but it never gets hot. And also it gives you good grip because you never know it might be raining at some point during the relay. Or snowing. <laughs> <laughs> You've really tested it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah it's, it's been, been tested to uh, destruction actually, and uh, also high winds in um, BMW, who are one of the sponsors, uh, in the wind tunnel. In, in Germany, they've been testing it at high wind speeds with blowing snow and rain and everything at yeah. it. Yeah, and I minus 10 degrees, 75 mile an hour gusts, so hopefully, fingers crossed, yeah. it should be okay. Everything that the British weather could, could throw at it. Sure. Um, you, t you talk about being light, what does it weigh, about a kilo or how it's much? Kilo. It's one of the lightest in history, that was, the, that was our goal anyway, so yeah, it's one kilo. Um, and just tell me, because the people who, the torchbearers, they will be allowed to keep them. They have to pay for it, don't they? That's but they right. will be allowed to keep yeah. them. They will. And in fact, they're the only people who can, as far as I know, because we can't get one or two. You can't even get one? No, we have to make our own somehow, a card or something. <laughs> you must have the prototype somewhere hidden, wasn't you? Well, we might have some things hidden yeah. in the studio, yeah. Um, and how did you get chosen to... to, to it was a competition. To, right. It was a competition that was about 18 months ago, and then we just had to submit. And uh, they selected, thankfully, mm -hmm. us. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Very exciting. Okay, and um, and you feel do you feel quite a sort of sense of responsibility with it? What that it might go out? Well, well, yes. <laughs> let's start with the going out thing first. Well, um, I have to say now <laughs> that the engineering was done by another company. Oh, look at that! Tech <laughs> no, no, I'm just giving them the credit because it won't go out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, there's a huge responsibility in designing something which has to represent the nation when they don't really have a chance to sort of mm -hmm. input into the project. So we were really nervous when we revealed the design. You know, that it would be liked. Okay, Luckily and you, you say it looks like a bit of um, um, sort of athletic. It looks like a baton, doesn't it? And yeah. That, that was the idea, was it? So partly, yes. Partly it was. Partly we wanted it to feel like a piece of sporting equipment. Partly it needed to feel ceremonial at the same time. So that was why we sort of decided on the gold colour, mm -hmm. so it was reflective and you know and got people excited. Okay. Well, I don't know how you've sorted out the weather, but you've done that. Well, we, you'd be surprised what we can pull <laughs> out. <back. laughs> um, will you do me a favour? If you can go find a spare torch, I know yeah. you're saying there's not many around. Will you do? Will you go and find one? Let's see what we can do. Bring and, back. And bring one back for okay. Us. okay. Uh, well, we know that helicopter is on its way. Um, the latest estimated arrival, I think, is in about sort of five, six minutes' time. Do stay with us here on breakfast. We'll have Ben Ainsley as well. He mu I haven't seen him, um, but he must be somewhere around here getting prepared uh, for his big moment. And um, I'm sure he'll probably be feeling a little bit nervous. But he is, of course, uh, an Olympian, and he will be used to pressure. Let's look back, though, at uh, where the torch has been so far. The honour, BBC News. I don't want to confuse you with the timings, but I'm, he I'm hearing about seven minutes from now um, that helicopter 
will be arriving. It is a rescue helicopter. We've got another helicopter taking shots of it, so we should be able to see it, hopefully, approaching us through the mist of what is really turning out to be a beautiful day here at Land's End. So there she is taking her time, and you can see there's a little bit of swell out there, but um, last year, I know when they had the years uh, before they were celebrating here, um, it was raining, but today it has turned out to be the most lovely day here at Land's End. And the crowds here have been fantastic. I arrived here at 4.30 in the morning and people were already walking um, over the heather to bag their places. And what's really lovely actually about it is it's a very kind of good nature crowd. And there you can see the helicopter just coming over the uh, Cornish coast. A lot of pride here in Cornwall that it should be here that the torch begins. It's long 70 day journey. 8,000 miles, and it's going by lots of different me means of transport as well. It's going to go from a zip wire from the Tyne Bridge, which will be something to watch. What a beautiful picture. We'll stay with those pictures, actually, um, because they're so stunning. Uh, while we talk to Bill Morris, he's director of ceremonies at LOCOG. He, I understand, Bill, morning to you, you or are organising the whole torch relay. Well, good morning. In fact, I've got a fantastic team doing that. But nonetheless, this is the culmination of some four years of planning. Every bit of the route has been driven on and tested, something like four times over, 8,000 torchbearers, 8,000 miles, 1,000 different communities to visit. Mm -hmm. But you know, the essence of this really is not just the vast numbers. It's the spirit the, of the simplicity of the flame and the people who carry it, the places it goes to. It really is, as we say, their moment to shine. That's the most important essence of this, not the statistics. Um, uh, yes, because there are lots of statistics, um, as you know well. Um, so just tell me, they're, and they're carrying it how far each person, more or Around less? Around about 300 metres in each case. Mm -hmm. So we've made it accessible for people. They don't all have to be Olympic athletes, of course, to do that. We're really looking to see the, the heroes, the heroes of each community, many of whom are, are never celebrated otherwise. So it's a great opportunity for them to play their part. OK, and just talk about, look at this picture is it comes over the coast towards us here it's flown this helicopter um, from Coldrose in the last few minutes or so just tell us on board it's the flame is inside a little special lantern isn't it it is those are stunning pictures and I can only say the weather here is so much better than it was in Athens yesterday when we picked up the flame but yes the flame travels in a tiny miners lantern as it did all the way from Athens mm -hmm. we have uh, spare copies of the flame taken from the original flame in Olympia a little while ago strapped into its into its cradle where the flame rests and then of course it's transferred into into the torches which you heard about earlier designed engineered manufactured in Britain uh, before it travels off on the relay itself I'm just behind me and we'll keep I think we'll keep with these helicopter pictures because it is just so lovely to watch um, this moment as it comes over the beaches and that beautiful blue sea we can't hear it as yet so just looking out behind me. Behind me, though, we can't actually see, and I don't know if you can see him. Look, there is Ben Ainsley. Um, very calm. Um, you can see him very calm. Look, there he has his 001. He is, of course, going to be the first torchbearer. I love watching athletes because they are so calm under pressure, aren't they, Bill? I guess this is a great person to start. Especially it's ideal. Because he, he's from around here, isn't he? Well, he's a, he's a local hero, he's a national hero, he's an international hero. He epitomises the Olympic spirit in so many ways. And yet the balance of torchbearers, I think, kicking us off this morning, says a lot, I think, about the, the relay. Ben, of course, the perfect start. Our second torchbearer is only 19. She's a surf champion from around here, and she's a sports ambassador. After that, we have uh, a hero of Air Sea Rescue in his 70s now, but who has the most stunning record of saving lives in this part of the Southwest. So that's mm. the kind of balance that we're looking for. Um, and just tell people as well, because they'll get, they can get all that information. I know, um, for example, on the BBC website, can't they? That yes, they can, get, so they can get details of biographies of just about all the torchbearers. The other thing that they can pick up uh, because of your website is the most brilliant HD feed of the relay from a truck going in front of it all the time. So wherever the relay goes, you'll be able to track it on the, on the BBC website and the London 2012 website. Yes, which is lovely. Um, so just talk us through proceedings this morning. Well, we kick off from here, and uh, we've got the most fantastic first route, of course. You couldn't, where, where on earth in the UK would you want to start other than Land's End? It's such a natural starting point for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the day today, we'll end up in Plymouth for our first evening celebration down on Plymouth Ho, and the, the team are busy getting ready for that this evening. So it really is the, the perfect first day, I would say. Um, tell us about the sort of convoy as well, because it's quite a sort of large convoy. How many people are involved? Well, overall, just about every night, we have to find beds for some 350 people 
so that's beds and meals and the logistics of simply getting all of those people around the UK, as I said before, are pretty fast. Mm. Uh, the convoy itself is some 20 to 30 vehicles, some going ahead of the time. And I think this is an important moment to say an enormous thanks to all our, our, our blue light services who've mm -hmm. played the most fantastic part in supporting the relay. Many of those people and the vehicles are, of course, in the emergency services who are helping and supporting. One of the other principles of the relay was that we only took the relay to places that invited us. Right. We went out to the whole of the UK, uh, this is some two to three years ago, and said, would you like the relay to come to your community? Thankfully, we were deluged with, uh, with invitations and we were able to accept pretty much all of them. So the spirit that we've tried to run the relay is to go to communities that said they would welcome us. And my goodness, the, the, the kind of planning and arrangements that big and small communities have made have been terrific. Down the, down the road here, I saw a pub that was running its torch-tastic evening. On the other hand, there are vast plans like the ones in Plymouth that we'll see tonight where the local authorities have really gone to town for us. Uh, I just put a quick link behind me, Ben Ainsley. Yeah, you see, he's just so cool. He's standing there chatting, very relaxed, isn't he? That's what you need with an Olympian, I guess. <laughs> it, for him, this is, uh, this is uh, I was going to say, walk in the park, a sail on the ocean, really. He's, uh, he's yeah. used to far greater pressure than this. Yeah, I think you can just see him over there. And look, the person, um, that, now all these people in grey, those, and you were in the grey as well, that's, that's how we recognise you, you're part of the team. Yeah, in fact, the, the way the, uh, the uniforms were planned, you'll notice that uh, the torchbearers are in the shimmering white with the gold, and because they're the ones who have to stand out. As I said, they're the heroes. Those in the grey are the crew, the team, but quite appropriately, we're trying to just blend into the background a little because the highlight should be the torchbearers. Here we have the uh, rescue helicopter again. Let me tell you who's on board. We've got Lieutenant Commander Richard Full. He is going to be the torchbearer. So when it lands, it's going to make quite a lot of noise, isn't it, for starters? So there should be a big cheer because we've got lots of people here this it's morning. It's absolutely heaving with people this morning. Indeed, when we arrived at uh, Cold Rose last night from Athens, the first thing we saw was that there were crowds all around the perimeter of the base, which we really hadn't expected. So I think there's no doubt that um, people are anxious to come out and see this once in a lifetime moment. And he'll carry it very gently, won't he? He that. will, <laughs> he will. Uh, I, I would say it's also symbolic and important as far as we're concerned that it is arriving on an air sea rescue chopper. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, the, the, the part that that organization plays around the whole of our maritime coastline, but here on the southwest especially, of course, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really important that we're celebrating what uh, that organization mm -hmm. achieves. Uh, so you talked a little bit about um, the convoy. What about security as well? Because, uh, you know, that is something you obviously have to consider, isn't it? Yes, we do. Um, uh, you'll find there's a, um, there's a very sophisticated security presence. The security team from the Met Police and the local police around the UK have practiced and rehearsed, and they're a very slick operation. But I would say they're um, also determined to, wherever possible, stay in the background. Mm -hmm. um, they have got exactly the right approach. They're fantastically professional. The, uh, the police who are actually running with... The, the, the relay throughout the, the trip are some of the fittest policemen you'll ever see. They've been, they've be been, on, a fit, the they've been on a fitness regime for about 18 months. They're going to be running something like a marathon every other day. Mm. Um, but they are also determined that uh, most of the time they will be simply setting into the background and we hope they won't be, uh, they won't be busy. Mm. Indeed, uh, I think the whole point uh, of the relay is to celebrate those individuals who are sharing the Olympic spirit and none of us want anything of that sort to be disrupted. Okay, um, Ben, where well, he is again. Um, just getting ready. Just to talk us through the uniform. Do they have flames on them as well? Yes, you the, can see on the uniform the, uh, there's, there's the, 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 the darker strip and it runs right down the arm onto which the, uh, mm -hmm. the torch is held. So right. the, the spirit of the design there was to take the design that uh, Barbara Oz could be created with the torch and integrate that straight into the design. So hence you'll see the, the gold stripe and the darker strip down the arm which the torch bearer is holding the torch with. Well, it looks stunning. Um, I understand we still can't see um, this helicopter. Uh, we can't see the helicopter yet. Um, ben Ainsley, there he is. I mean, he's got three Olympic gold medals. And hopefully a fourth, if uh, that would fingers be fabulous, crossed, wouldn't, wouldn't that it? be something this year? Um, Bill, what I'm going to ask you to do is, will you stay with us until the heli... Can you have got time to stay with us? I have indeed, heli yes. Brilliant, until the helicopter lands. Thankfully, Nothing the, like team are, uh, the team are doing their business. Okay, I can, well, I can enjoy around, it at this stage. Around, because Thank it's you. absolutely brilliant having you here um, to talk about all the logistics. What I'm going to do while we watch those helicopter shots is bring in a couple of people. We've got Keith Pascoe and Lee. Come in. Um, Watch out for the mic. <laughs> it's all very fluid here yeah. this morning. And we're just watching these fantastic pictures of, of the helicopter. You two, you've come here from where? Red Roof this Red morning? Red Roof, near Red Roof. Fantastic. What time did you get up this morning? About 5. 
five past five. Now, Indiana. how did your dad persuade you to get up that time of the morning? Um, that we're going to see like the torch and other people that we haven't seen before. Yeah, and did you? Did you? Were you happy to do that? Um, Not yeah. really, no. <laughs> Oh, are you proud that it's in Cornwall? Yeah, um, yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah, because it's uh, something I want in a life, once in a lifetime. Never likely to see it again. Yeah, we're probably not, are we? No, well, no. us, us two probably not. But maybe you might see it again in your lifetime. Yeah. And yeah. what about sport? Are you into what? Will you be watching the Olympics as well? Um, maybe. Yeah. What kind so, of sports do you like watching? Um, not much. Not very much. Well, he likes his skin to do more. Yeah. Um, so just tell us, um, so you wanted to come for a once in a lifetime opportunity. What's the sort of feeling around here? There's lots of people out here this morning. There's a lot more people than we thought there was going to be. We thought we'd be on our own this time of morning. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Have you yeah. got a good place to watch? No, uh, we were just over there. Oh, yeah, well, that's all right. You, you, if you're just there, you yeah. will literally be one yeah. of the first people to see it. Yeah. Um, is it nice to have Ben Ainsley, who's who's from around here? Or it is, yeah. That's good, yeah. Lovely. Well, listen, have a lovely day. Yeah. Really enjoy it. I hope you get to get some good photos as well. We're going to go back and watch the helicopter because it's um, right. only a few minutes away. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Um, so I'm hearing, the latest I'm hearing is about four minutes till that helicopter um, arrived here. And we've still got Bill, Bill Morris, who's a, a part of, who is organising this whole relay. It's, uh, it, you know, it's interesting that uh, we are indeed, of course, as you know, trying to inspire the next generation to take up sports. Mm -hmm. uh, something like half of the 8,000 torchbearers will be young people. And uh, so it's young people who, of course, are sports champions, but young people who have perhaps confounded some of the unattractive images of, of young people at times in this country. So yes. people who've done brilliant things for charities or for organisations to make their, their community work, or indeed just those young people who sometimes hold families together. Mm. Uh, th those are the kind of stories that you'll be seeing across, uh, across the next 70 days. Oh, we've got a couple of young people we'll speak, into, we'll speak to in a minute who got here very early this morning as well. Um, so just tell us a little bit about so the, the actual highlights of the journey for you, do you think? What will they be? Because I, I mentioned the, the zip wire. Yes, that'll be, that'll be great fun. I'm hoping to see that up in, uh, up in Newcastle on the, uh, on the bridge up there. Uh, the Isle of Wight will be, a, will be a great one, going down past the Needles, another great maritime location on the chairlift there. Mm -hmm. I think some of the urban locations inevitably will be, will be special. We're looking forward to its arrival in the heart of London for the, for the final week. I think there'll be some very special moments in Northern Ireland and, of course, on its trip from Northern Ireland over to Dublin. I think that'll be very poignant as well. Mm -hmm. um, I understand it will be guarded by the it go to the Tower of London, is that right? It will indeed, yes, and the, and the flame will be guarded in the vaults where the, uh, where the crown jewels are kept which seems appropriate. That's on its very first day in London, just a week before the opening ceremony. I do you know, I, I can hear we a can helicopter. Hear things, I'm not we? sure it is that, the actual helicopter, but it's about two and a half minutes from landing. That is it. What a lovely moment. There it is. There it is. <laughs> um, just stay with us, Bill. This is going to arrive. It's going to land in the next couple of moments. That's a fantastic so, sight, it circles it? around us. Oh, and they're giving us a wave. I must say it was a great sight to see the fleet of those helicopters that we arrived yesterday in, uh, in Court Rose. They are such uh, iconic and vital parts of the, uh, of the community here. So it's just taking a large circle around us. Nobody's gone quiet. I hope the, uh, I hope the lantern and the cauldron are in, in, in its, uh, the flame in its, in its lantern is sustained in the um, helicopter. It was great to see yesterday on the plane that uh, just about everybody on the flight yesterday had to come up and just make sure that the, the flames in their uh, lanterns were sustained. They, they were tremendous. Mm -hmm. And in fact, right across Greece last week, when the, uh, the torches, the first time in a sense that the London 2012 torches were used in earnest, they were put through their tests uh, through some pretty astonishing and rather un-Greek weather and we're pleased to say that the, uh, the flame didn't go out on the torches once. It was the most reliable torch I think that they've ever had. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Just uh, stay with us, Bill, will you, while we just watch this helicopter come into land here at Land's End. Very good morning to you. You are watching Breakfast live from Land's End in Cornwall where we are just moments away from the start of the Olympic torch relay. Hundreds of people are here waiting to see the first, first torch bearer, Ben Ainsley, start this 8,000 mile journey around the UK. And I'm just going to be quiet for a moment as we wait for that helicopter to land just behind us.
touchdown. The Olympic flame in that special lantern is at land's end. And in just a few moments, Lieutenant Commander Richard Full is, I imagine, very carefully going to take that special lantern out past the crowds down to the Land's End sign, which has been specially marked with Land's End 2012, and waiting in the sunshine in his white and gold and gray uniform is three times Olympic gold medalist Ben Ainsley, sailor Ben Ainsley, who right now is looking incredibly calm. He will be the first torchbearer on this long journey around the UK and Ireland. behind us as well let's talk about some of the facts and figures so 8,000 miles is going to travel with me is Bill Morris who is in charge of this whole extraordinary logistical operation the logistics are, are incredible uh, as we've and said just, I think we can just see before we there the is the special lantern and here is Lieutenant Commander Richard Full quite a moment I imagine for him as he stands to show it to the crowds and have a few of his photos taken. And then he's going to walk past us in the next couple of seconds or so. As we were saying, the logistics and the, uh, the stats are incredible. But in fact, that's the real message, the simplicity of a flame. And it's worth just remembering that the origins of the flame from the ancient games were to symbolize the moment when communities laid down their arms so that the athletes could perform. That's the essence of the story here. And that's very much still the essence of that very simple flame there in its, in its uh, lantern. And he's carrying it, you can see very carefully, as you would, wouldn't you? It's the gold, jo gold <laughs> the, 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 the jewels, of course. It's, it carries, of course, the, uh, the spirit of the Olympic Games and, and mm -hmm. later the, uh, the Paralympic Games. And uh, it, it symbolizes, I sense, I guess, the fact that the whole of the UK's communities is now gearing up and ready and in the spirit. What's celebrating really the spirit of the games. About this morning is, um, as you can see, he's carrying that past the crowds. Is first of all the amount of people who have turned up, and it's a very kind of warm atmosphere, isn't it, Bill? It you is, noticed it's very, that? It's, it's very British. It's a very English atmosphere this morning. Every, key, everybody is welcome. Uh, all sorts of community organisations have come out with their own forms of celebrations as well. You see flags and bunting of many kinds. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the pubs and the restaurants and the cafes down here are all mm -hmm. celebrating in their way. Bunting has come out. It's. Uh, here it is, I think he's just coming around the corner. <laughs> and just a little cheer, it's rather lovely, isn't it, how people are um, taking this, the spirit in which they're taking it. And many people we've spoken to this morning saying they just want to come here because this is possibly the last time in their lifetime they'll see this. I think that's certainly the case. Uh, I mean, the, London is, is the only city to be celebrating having the Games for its third time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to imagine in our lifetimes it'll come again. There it is. OK, just behind uh, my right shoulder. Ben Ainsley, a wry smile from Ben Ainsley. And we'll just stop for a second while we watch this moment of the uh, torch being lit. Photographs with the crowds, obviously. Big smiles. Is it quite technical here, Bill? Or is it quite simple to do this? <laughs> The answer is it's quite technical. I certainly couldn't do it. Thankfully, our, uh, our torch team have been practicing and practicing this. Uh, it's a matter of taking the flame out from the uh, from from the lantern and putting it yes. onto the uh, onto the torch itself. It's a, a, a machine called a rod, the lighting rod, right, which okay. takes the flame. Okay. Well, let's have a little watch. They're just a, they're enjoying their moments, aren't they? they are. Rightly so. I think if I was them, I'd milk it for all it was worth. <laughs> wouldn't you? We'll be able to speak to them a little bit later, actually. <laughs> Once they've done the honours. 
So each torchbearer has their own torch, as it were, and it's lit from one to the other. That's how it yes, works. Yes, and there's an interesting balance of technologies, in truth, that we're seeing there, because the miner's lantern mm -hmm. has hardly changed in over 100 years. It's still made by a, a, a little organisation in the north of England, but the lanterns have hardly changed. The torch itself, of course, is very contemporary cutting-edge design with its thousand holes and this is uh, one indicating of the, one the, of, each of the torch bearers. This is one of your team, and they are now going to do the official lighting, as it were. Yes, yeah? indeed. In fact, what we're seeing now, the two um, torch, uh, the torch security team, who are in fact um, police officers, yeah. who've been trained to do this as well as to protect the flame. They've been uh, working with us, as I said, for, for some 18 months or so. I'm just going to take a closer look at the pictures. They've practiced this quite a few times, haven't they? Oh, many, many times. <laughs> you can see the lighting rod now coming yeah. <laughs> into the... Uh, just going there into the uh, into the lantern to pick up the flame. Mm -hmm. It's quite a, quite a precise task, particularly difficult in high winds. Uh, right. we, we, we were having a few moments out in Athens when the weather was absolutely dreadful, when they wondered whether the uh, the flame would transfer, but it did so. It takes then, a little while, but so, it uh, normally gets there. So it sets off this morning uh, with Ben Ainsley, and it's going to be running all day until tonight. And then where does it go at night? Uh, it goes back into the lantern, yeah. protected with um, a number of the, uh, of the of the support team, the police team, with it literally sleeping next to it every night. There we are. And now we go on to the torch. Oh, look, straight away, very healthy flame. Fantastic. So there is Ben Ainsley, three times Olympic gold medalist, holding the torch. The first person in this 8,000-person relay. Beautiful shot of Land's End. And he is just one of 8,000 people. How far has he got to run, though? About 300 metres. That's the... Uh, it'll it'll vary a little manage. bit. I think he'll manage that. I think that'll, that'll, be, um, that'll be no problem. And, of course, it's, it's also designed so that uh, you don't have to run. If okay. there are people who, with, uh, who just couldn't manage the run, you can walk it if you have to, and you've got or indeed roll them in a wheelchair if necessary. And people in, in, in wheelchairs, each, haven't you? Each, yes, we have. And each day there are between 100 and 120 torchbearers. Mm -hmm. There are times, of course, when we have to go into what we call convoy mode. If we're travelling long distances where perhaps there's not very much in the way of population, it goes into the convoy, into the vehicles, and then back into, uh, into relay mode with torchbearers as often as we can. Okay, so Lieutenant Commander Richard Full uh, taking, just going off centre stage there. It's fantastic to have Ben Ainsley here, isn't it? Because he he really is the ideal first person in there. We were so thrilled that he could make it, and of course, having having just taken his latest of many world only champions last, as only well, yesterday, wasn't it? straight straight from competition uh, into this, and it really is a glorious day, isn't it? Blue sky behind. Uh, so different from uh, from the weather, as I said, in Athens when it was like a monsoon. And also this time last year we were here on breakfast and it was not, we couldn't even see the sign, I don't think. Uh, we, we were shrouded in mist, were we not? Uh, we just about saw the sign, but nothing okay, here he it. goes. Let's just let him go past us. And I can see the designers running to take a picture of their <laughs> Olympic torch too. break up on these pictures sir. but we've got a camera basically just in front uh, of Ben Ainsley that will stay in front of him. Um, do stay with us though because um, we've also got other shots that we can show you if they break up too much but apologies if there's a bit of break up. You probably noticed there the torch also has three sides and that's partly to represent the fact that London's hosting for the third time, the only city in the world ever to do so. Uh, but secondly, to, to, uh, to celebrate the, the values of, of the Olympic movement and, and uh, it, it's the, the, the torch also has 8,000 holes to mark every single every torch single bearer person. as it goes around the United Kingdom. It's a fantastically successful design. You probably heard earlier on that it won the uh, design of the year, not just for, uh, for, for goods, but the design council decided that across every aspect of great British design, this was the thing they wanted to celebrate. And uh, we're very thrilled about that. Thrilled also because it's, uh, it's a symbol that will be seen so obviously. Um, do you know what? I'm going to instruct you in a minute because, Bill, we have Lieutenant Commander Richard Full. Morning, how do you do? How are you doing? <laughs> uh, do come stand here. We're just watching pictures of Ben Ainsley. Just come and there you go, just make you stand there. You just handed over the tour to Ben Ainsley. How was that for you? Fantastic, isn't it? It's brilliant. <laughs> how far has he got to go? I think he's only going about 300 metres. Oh, You've right. gone a bit further. So we have, talk yeah. us through your journey. So well, um, this morning we were up pretty early. We briefed at uh, 0515. 
Uh, we've got all our passengers and our, our important cargo. And then we launched about 6.30 uh, to get ourselves airborne in good time. Uh, so then we went around the um, St. Michael's Mount, a couple of times, good pictures, Minak Theatre. So we were just holding over there at the Minak Theatre, then we got our sort of run-in time. And yeah, we came in and landed nice and safely. You've had a very big smile throughout the whole since <laughs> I've seen you land this morning, as does Ben Ainsley. Um, is it special holding the torch? It is. I was a bit, I was a bit shaky, Ooh. but yeah, but didn't want to fall over coming out of the helo. But yeah, it was all right. Once I got walking, I was just concentrating, and then uh, I was get, getting down to the side. Mm. Um, and uh, quite an honour as well to carry it in the helicopter. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, R a real honour, you know. And, and being a West Country man as well, um, to come down here to Cornwall. Where I'm based just up the way, it's mm -hmm. just fantastic. Yeah. And so tell us about the sort of practicalities because you're not normally allowed to fly with naked flames. We're not, but it's not, it's not a naked flame because oh, it's, in, okay, it's, it's okay. enclosed, so that, I know semantics. But um, <laughs> yeah, we got, we got um, clearance from the CAA, the same clearance that Firefly got yesterday uh, yeah. when it came into Cold Rose. We have our own rules and regs that we have to follow, but predominantly the CAA said yes, and off we went. Mm -hmm. And how come you were chosen then? Um, Did you put a lot of bids in? Or? No, well, I don't, I don't know. Right time, right place. Um, I, I was in the initial phases of the planning, so right. I think my boss just said, well, you might as well crack on and, and carry on with the plane. And lots of people here. Um, and Are you surprised by the amount of people who turned out this morning? Yeah, I mean, normally when we come down here for our training, we might get a few tourists and whatnot. We, we tend to do our winching down at the tourists behind us there. Uh, but yeah, it was amazing. All, the, all those people wandering down. A lo lot of them saying... Um, that they've come down today because it's sort of they think it'll be the last time in their lifetime they see the Olympic flame here in the UK. Is that what you, you think? Well, as well? I, I think so. I mean, when was the last time we had it? 1948, yeah. something like that. So yeah, if you extrapolate on there, then yeah, we probably won't see that again. Certainly down here, I would imagine. So yeah, very, very exciting, very honoured. And so, um, so uh, what's it like? Because you're a rescue helicopter, aren't you? Quite a different cargo. Today. Yes. Yeah. Equally yeah. precious. Equally in precious some ways. In, in some ways. Yeah. I mean. The, the sort of clipped seas around the southwest. This is our patch, really. Um, don't normally get to carry flames around. Normally, people that have done something silly to themselves uh, off to hospital. But yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, what we're doing now, we're just waiting as uh, Ben Ainsley. I think there is that the media vehicle. I think there's this. Yeah, yeah. So in this media vehicle, um, there's uh, there's cameras on it, and basically over the next 70 days, you're going to be able to see the whole of the torch relay, every single run of 8,000 runners. Um, is this something you'll tell your grandkids about, do you think? I hope so. I hope <laughs> to be able to, yeah. My, my, my kids came down last night from, uh, from Devon, just outside Plymouth, mm -hmm. uh, with my mum and dad, and we, we came watching one show, which was really good, obviously, very excited. So, yeah, hopefully someone's recording this somewhere. Oh, they we, will be. We, we, I'm we sure can, we can get you we one. Can, we can play that back another time. Um, and just tell us about all the people at uh, Cold Rose as well. Was that, was that special for them? It, I think so, yeah. You know, we've got 3,000 people working there on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, planning and whatnot that goes into an event like this and getting the jet in and getting all the logistics so the whole base you know has come together to produce our so I presume that one moment so yeah and tell me about the rest of the day you're going to go home you've got to well, fly the helicopter safely back well yeah we're, we're going to stick around for a couple hours then we've got to fly back and then it's back to normality I'm afraid football match this afternoon and then uh, an awards uh, dinner this afternoon oh it's not a bad lunch no, either, no, it? it's, well, listen, good. it's been an absolute pleasure talking thank to you, you. Um, thank you very much what will be your best moment do you think I think landing with landing and seeing all those people and walking out off the grass, stopping, and then obviously down to the to the signpost. Um, what we'll do, um, thank you, but we're going to let you go, Rich, because no I know worries. you had a bit. Thank you so much. Absolute oh, pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Really, and uh, great that to you came you to see well. us too. Um, ben Ainsley just getting ready um, in that, and I think the media vehicle getting ready as well. And we can talk to another couple of people as well while we're here. Thank you, mate. thank you, Rich. Coming in, we've got a couple of guests here um, who have been watching you come a long way today we're just from Perrinport so not so what's your name tell us your Lucy, name I'm Lucy. Lucy it's Melinda right yeah. from Perrinport so you're yes. proud that it's arrived in Cornwall yeah we got yeah we got we got up early for it very proud yeah very happy very excited why did you want to come down well we've got tickets for the Olympics and Lucy had we'll been just... nominated to be a torchbearer anyway so we just thought we'd do the whole yeah. package and come and see it are you going to thought we'd see it at the start no I didn't but you know that was better than anything was it really yeah. why was why good why was it better than anything we're just seeing it at the very first stage and it's we're going to see country. the Olympics so we thought we'd see it from the very start and are you are you really keen on sport anyway yeah I, I love sport I am um, I, I play netball and 
background and yeah. And so how important is it for you that the, 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 the London, London, it's going to be in London then, the Olympics are here? I think it's amazing, I think it's got so many people into sport this year and thinking about the world of sport and it's just given so, it's given so much to us. Um, it's been a lovely atmosphere down here this morning. Oh, it's fantastic, yeah. And it's, yeah. Uh, we couldn't believe how many people were here when we first <laughs> got here. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, we thought we'd be the only people. But it's just, um, it's just fantastic and it's happening in Cornwall, which is our county, and it's what a great showcase for the yeah. start of the, the talk show. The sun's come out and it's... it's What's lovely. really lovely, it's really touching this, isn't it? Uh, ben yeah. Ainsley there, just walking slowly through the crowds. Let everyone touch it. And letting people touch the torch. Oh, fantastic. Amazing. Such a memorable moment for yeah. everybody. Is it, is it important for you as well that he, it's, it's Ben Ainsley who is the first? Yeah, well, I think so. He's, he is he's so well-known in Cornwall. Yeah, so he's a great ambassador for the first leg of the torch. He really is, isn't he? Well, I'm going to let you go. Um, thank, thank you, you very, very much. Thanks for coming to see us. Go, I hope you go and see if you can yes. catch up with him. You have a touch with him. Okay, so we're going to stay with these pictures of Ben Ainsley as he sets off at a lovely slow pace there making sure that everybody gets a glimpse of this torch goodness me this is what we call the kiss one torch um, kissing another to the second torchbearer. And here with me, I've got uh, Philip, who, uh, who can track me through. So, just tell me a little bit about this. So this is, yeah. this is called the kiss, isn't This it? is the exchange of the torch. Um, the first torch runner, Ben Ainsley, mm -hmm. gives it to Tassie Swallow, who hopes that one day her sport of surfing will be, com be part of the Olympic Games. Um, the IOC are constantly looking at different sports to come into the games she shows the torch to the crowd and this is a big moment the first exchange in 1948 it was a butcher from Dover who was the first runner on British soil he received it from a chief petty officer of the HMS Vista yep. so very different scenes here early in the morning as she takes the torch it burns so brightly this is the torch that has come all the way from ancient Olympia this very flame which was lit by the rays of the sun just over a week ago. And now here in Cornwall, we can see the helicopters behind as the first real torch run. Yes. Which she's breaking into a run there for the first time. She's escorted along the route. Even in Greece, they had some 16 vehicles accompanying the torch mm. relay. So it really is a cavalcade to go through the countryside and we will see these scenes over and over again. The Union flag in the background there, of course, and even a couple of flags of Greece, I think I saw. And Philip Barker, you, you yourself, you've carried a torch. Um, it's clear from speaking to people here this morning, there is something for lots of people very special. Another, so this is the third bearer here. Yep, this is the third bearer and the torch will be passed that they will keep the, each torch, but it's the flame that is passed from hand to hand every time. Um, these days, they give a torch to every one of the runners. I think they have to spray, pay a small fee to, to keep the torch, but uh, it hasn't always been so. In 1952, they only manufactured 22 torches, and they are obviously the rarest Olympic torches in the world, and they go for thousands if they ever come onto the market, and they hardly ever do. I was talking to someone in Greece because everybody in the village of Olympia seems to have carried the torch at some point and we were talking about how much some of these torches cost when they come into mm. an auction and he said why would anybody want to sell an Olympic torch because it's such a special part of your being if you've actually carried it. Yes, I can understand that actually. And we're getting a sort of sense here of, oh look, so he's been given instructions by the torch security team who are these yep. people dressed in grey. Yep. And what will happen is each torchbearer waits. They have the, obviously the reserve flames just in case anything should go wrong. Sometimes even it can actually be too hot for the torch. Um, back in Munich in 1972, they put it through every conceivable test, but they didn't test it for really hot weather. And they found that in certain parts of Greece, the temperatures were just so hot that the flame went out because the gas didn't burn correctly. But let's hope that nothing of that kind of misfortune for 
befalls the torch here but this this is a wonderful moment Cornwall seeing the torch for the first time it came up through Dover in 1948 and when it visited here in 2004 and 2008 of course the journey was exclusively through London mm. so this is a chance for the rest of the country for the first time to see this great Olympic torch and I love it people you know jogging along in front yeah everybody wants to get their own moment of their own picture of the torch as it comes through it's it's a very interesting design this gold with the 8,000 foot perforations it's been dubbed the cheese grater but <laughs> don't, 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 don't tell the designers they're just close to us <laughs> well they, they, they were saying that they've kind of accepted it and they, they regard it as a term of affection I think somebody called it oh, the cheese grater in the very first there. day um, but, I'm uh, just trying to look Philip as we talk I think I wasn't watching very closely but I think somebody stumbled actually but um, so far so good yeah. and when it first when it arrived in 1948 didn't it go out very shortly it after went it out on the Dover quayside they had the the dignitaries the Lord Lieutenant of Kent was waiting there and it went out three times four times and even five times before it even reached the quayside in the dais where the dignitaries were waiting and Chief Petty Officer Herbert Barnes who carried the torch said it was like a spring-loaded firework in those days but uh, we, we did have a few incidents in Greece where one or two of the, pla the ca carriers did stumble with the torch. One right. of them was an 87-year-old footballer from Olympiakos in Piraeus. But it, it had, even when they, when they fall, it's, the flame still goes. It, it happened at the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics in 1956. Did somebody light it with a... a, a, a what, what did they light it with after that? Well, he, he stumbled and yes. he kept the torch going, okay. Guido Caroli. Um, he was very, very upset that this had happened. He tripped over a wire that was in the stadium, but uh, he managed to keep the torch alive, and that's the most important thing. It's only ever gone out once to public knowledge in the cauldron in the stadium. That was in Montreal, and they made a great show of getting another flame from Greece. And ever since, they've had these reserve flames. There's about four, aren't there? Yeah, aren't there? yeah they, they keep the reserve flames alongside it. Um, this time, of course, the torch making its grand procession accompanied by it the great It seems to settle cavalcade. down. It's interesting it's having watched it over the last few minutes. Um, yeah. You know, they've sort of settled into a rhythm. You can see you can see the police there on either side, dressed in grey. They're specially trained for yeah. this, aren't they? Yeah. Well, we, of course, had the infamous flame attendants in, 19, in 2008. Mm. But uh, in 1948, the torch was actually accompanied on its journey by a British Olympic official called Sandy Duncan in a Rolls Royce. So not quite as stately a procession here, but this is, this is a site we're going to see across the countryside. And of course, it, it's also visiting Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. It's going to Dublin as well, yes. although um, obviously... And Philip, you, Philip Buff, you are, you are a, you know, an extraordinary <laughs> knowledge on all of this. So you, you, you have carried the torch yourself. You're going to carry it to yourself, aren't you? Yes, I, I'm going to get to carry it three days before the opening ceremony, which is a very great honour, for which I'm very grateful. It's going to be a wonderful moment. You were nominated for that. Right? I was nominated like for that. Like everybody yes. else. I, I was born in Hackney, which is one of the Olympic boroughs, so it's quite special for me to be seeing an Olympic Games coming so close to where I was born. Okay. Well, let's see. We're going to stay with these pictures, and what we are hoping, fingers crossed, uh, in the next few minutes or so, that uh, Ben Ainsley. I'm sure he's busy, and I'm sure he's talking to lots of other people. Um, but we're hoping that he will come to talk to us here on breakfast. So the Olympic torch has begun. The relay has begun, it's 8,000 mile journey, and this is the third torch bearer. Are we on the fourth already, Philip? I think we're on the third so far. And remember, London is the first city to receive an Olympic torch from Olympia on two occasions mm -hmm. for the Summer Games. Innsbruck, which had the Youth Olympics this year, has also had it on that journey from Olympia. Mm -hmm. um, when they had it in Los Angeles, they simply flicked a switch in the stadium to light the torch, so they didn't actually have a relay. This, oh. this started in the early 1930s. It was the idea of a German professor called Karl Diem and a Greek International Olympic Committee member called Joannis Kutsias, and they thought it would be a great idea to link the ancient games with the modern games. And it was suggested that instead of using a mechanical means, they would light it by the rays of the sun. So this is why this torch is so special to so many people. Yes, they can is, sense yes. that this has come from Olympia. It has come to the city where the games will, will be staged. And 
every person that carries this torch will milk this moment and they will remember it for the rest of their lives. Baron Pierre de Coubertin once said, remember the fire that came from Olympia. It brought light and warmth to your lives. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's doing here. It's bringing light and warmth to Cornwall on this glorious summer spring morning. Okay, um, do stay with me, Philip. Um, beside me, I have on my right, Jonathan Edwards, morning again. <laughs> um, you carried this torch. It's, is it special? How special is it? I have, but let's be honest, carrying the torch for Athens isn't the same as carrying the torch for London, is it? No. Um, I, mean, I was emotional last night, but that, that's been my most Has incredible it? Olympic moment so far in this journey towards London 2012. I thought it was... see Ben standing there, proud Olympian, you know, the flame lit and starting its journey. I, I feel a bit emotional now talking You've about got, it to him. You, you actually do. had a proper tear? Yeah, I had a proper tear. It's, um, yeah, it's, you know, you can go back to when we launched our bid at the end of 2003. Mm. Nobody thought we had a chance of winning. And then being in the auditorium in Singapore, when we assumed that Jack Rock was going to say Paris and not London, because all the photographers and all the, the camera crews are right in the front of the Paris delegation, not the London delegation, then the celebrations, and then all the hard work that's gone on. Mm. You've seen the so you, you're not only, you've got your own gold medal, you've carried the torch, you're part of the organising team. <laughs> it's an amazing day for you, isn't it? It is an amazing day for me, and I thought Ben was the perfect person he was, he, it was to very start well, it. Yeah. And he's just got a, just a quiet sort of a presence about him and, and he, he was clearly honoured three gold medals he's won he's probably going to win a fourth gold medal and you could see the sense of pride that he had and he didn't run off and he just walked and, and let people take in the moment because he realised how special it was he was um what was, was really brilliant. touching actually was um because I, I was watching the pictures he was walking up there and letting other people touch the torch I as know. well wasn't he i know he was he was brilliant and i and i guess he, had, he probably hadn't thought what he was going to do and how he was going to do it but he just responded to the moment and it was like a proud olympian um mm. Um, starting, up, starting off the, the torch journey. I'm just going to move you around to the other side. Sure. We're going to watch these pictures. I think we're now on the, um, and people have, will have to keep me up to date because I didn't, wasn't watching. I think we're now on the third person. It's very interesting, isn't it? To, all of the torchbearers, Ben obviously included, just really taking their time. It is. I, I mean, I, well, there's a little jog going on there, isn't there? Mm. But, but generally, it's very quiet. And people are so close. I mean, one of the things that, that was talked about beforehand, you know, particularly after some of the scenes we saw with the, the Beijing torch relay, is okay. how strong will security be? But that's just. And here we go, another. Yeah. And this is uh, this is called a kiss, a kiss, isn't it? It is a kiss. What a lovely word. It is kind of very <laughs> so gentle. So it's one flame to another. To another. Is that quite a nerve-wracking moment when you're actually having to do well, that? Well, obviously, you want it to light. I think that's. <laughs> the, you don't want to be the person for, for whom it goes out. And 90% and you know, of our torchbearers have been nominated by the public, mm. local heroes. Uh, so you've got the likes of Ben Ainsley, who's known worldwide, and then people who very few people know, but they'll be friends and family supporting them. And it's a huge moment. Yes. So just to remind uh, viewers at home, first of all, apologies if there's breakup on these pictures, but these are live pictures from Land's End. This is a breakfast special this Saturday morning as the Olympic torch begins... It's long journey, 8,000 miles it's traveling, 8,000 torchbearers. It's gonna to go to 1,000 different cities all over the UK and Ireland. And uh, Jonathan Edwards here, gold medalist, part of the organizing team, is here with me. Oh, it's picking up the pace now. I, I know. <laughs> it's the first time it's broken into a jog. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's lovely to see you here, especially as, as a gold medalist yourself. Um, and, and it's really been quite a, a sort of day for you, hasn't it? It has been. I mean, obviously last night as well in Coldrose. And I spent two days ago now travelling the reverse route of the, of the torch from Bath down to Falmouth and meeting lots of the different people and communities who are going to be celebrating the torch arriving. And, you know, there's going to be hockey festivals. There's a world record attempt on eating cream teas in St. Alstall. Was there? Did you take Later part? on today. Well, I had oh, a little, pra had a little okay. practice. I think it's between I think it's between 10 and 1 o'clock today. They're trying to get 330-odd people in the same room eating cream teas. And that is an official Guinness World Record. But they've also <laughs> got go there, like. a, a lot of beach games going on to try and get... I mean, one of the, the things you wanted to use the games for was to inspire young people to take part in sport. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of you know... Uh, questions about legacy and you really think it is it changing things do you think what we've done what you've done so far yeah I, but certainly I mean I think there are people all over the country who are involved in sport and want to get young people involved with sport and what 2012 has allowed them to do is use the inspiration of the games and the association with the games to 
highlight what they're doing and hopefully to get more young people involved. And as I say, there's going to be all sorts of sporting festivals happening across the country, which the torch has been a catalyst for. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping to get Ben Ainsley. I think I'm going to have to go and grab him, actually, Jonathan. Can you help me with that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's go and get Ben Ainsley. We'll go and get Ben Ainsley <laughs> as we that last... Uh, kiss there and it's been really um, a lovely scene here down this morning were you were you impressed by the amount of people you turned up Jonathan yes I mean we got came came in last night from from cold Rose and I was with Paul Dyson who you interviewed earlier the chief mm -hmm. executive and you're kind of thinking well I wonder how many people will turn out what kind of excitement will it generate and I think Hello, we've got everybody. the answer here <laughs> um, <laughs> the games has an amazing capacity to touch people's lives I don't I, I never realized it when I was competing you kind of think it's your own little Olympic world but then you see this and, um, and this is what the, the torch really is all about. I think Boris said the democratisation of the Olympics. And mm. I think he's right. And do you think these next 70 days, they're important for exactly that, to build kind of excitement and all the rest of it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think people are excited and very proud that we're hosting um, the Olympics. Uh, and this provides a moment for them, for that to crystallise, really, mm. uh, for them to come out and celebrate. And it's the moment when the Games goes to where people are, rather than them having to come and see the Games. Jonathan, it's an absolute pleasure speaking to you this morning. Jonathan Edwards, thank you very much indeed for that. Um, you're going to help me find Ben. Yes. <laughs> go well, let's go, let's go and find him. <laughs> OK, what I want to do, I'm going to hand you back to Charlie um, in a few moments, though, but let's just take you back a bit. Uh, here on Breakfast this morning, the Olympic torch has started this massive relay, 8,000 miles. I've said that lots of times, but it's an impressive um, distance. It arrived here in a rescue helicopter and then it was brought very slowly down to the Land's End sign. And there you can see the moment that it was lit from this fabulous golden lantern. And do you know what? I can see Ben Ainsley. Um, he's there, obviously, but he's just coming in on my right, so we'll speak to him in a moment. But Ben Ainsley, three times Olympic champion. Very calm he was. <laughs> and here he is now. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ben, fantastic to see you. Many, well, congratulations. Yeah. How, how are you feeling? How was it? Oh, really, very proud for the whole nation, really. It's a fantastic moment. It's such beautiful weather here. So many great people have turned out. And, uh, yeah, just really proud for everyone involved. Um, but, uh, this has all started off. Uh, sh show us the torch. Yep. So this is it. Um, it's actually quite heavy. <laughs> is it? You didn't have to go <laughs> yeah. far, did you? Yeah, yeah, but it was, uh, yeah, it's great. And um, tell us about that moment. Were you were you a little bit nervous when they were lighting it that it wasn't going to light, or what were you thinking? Um, yeah, it, it was just actually pretty emotional, to be honest. I mean, you know, so much effort's gone into getting this uh, the Olympics here in London um, from so many people, and it means so much. So uh, very, very proud for everyone involved. And of course, you're sort of from round here, so how does it? You know, people are very yeah. proud to have you as the first torchbearer. Well, yeah, it's great for Cornwall, isn't it, to uh, start off, kick off here in Land's End. Um, you know, so many old, old friends around here. Um, so, yeah, I'm very, very proud for Cornwall and, and for the nation and uh, such an exciting period now in the run-up to the Olympics. How, how's the training going? I mean, yesterday you, what, you became six-time again world champion. Yeah. Fantastic No, it's news. great. So, yeah, we had world championships uh, that went very well, but uh, really uh, the main goal, of, of course, this year is the Olympics and getting the preparations right for that with, with not very long to go now. So. Um, what's it going to be like um, as an athlete competing here in the UK and, you know, possibilities, yeah. fingers crossed, of a gold medal right yeah. here? Well, I think this is just a, an indication of what it's going to be like for, for everyone competing. You know, such strong home support, just fantastic, you know, the atmosphere here and around the rest of the country. And, of course, the torch is uh, a great uh, way to get the, that Olympic fever going mm -hmm. around, the, around the nation. So, uh, very exciting. Um, ben, what I loved about um, when you were there, you were very calm. And then you, you let everybody touch the torch as well, didn't you? Which, did yeah. you know you were going to do that? No, you I didn't. You, you know, it's not, not scripted, didn't really. They said, you know, you can run, you can sprint, you can walk. Um, so, yeah, I just felt, uh, you know, I think the Olympics is for everybody. So uh, it's great for people to be able to, to get up close to the torch and feel it and feel a part of it. And I love your number as well, 001. Fantastic. Yeah. And Ben, absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for talking to us here on Breakfast. I know there's yeah. lots of people who want to see you, so I'll let you go. Thank right, you very thank you. much Cheers. indeed. Bye. Um, so, there you go. <laughs> it's all a bit... <laughs> So you really get a sense of the affection uh, of which Ben is held here. And also, it's been a most lovely atmosphere here this morning. People were out at 4.30 this morning, really have enjoyed themselves. And the Olympic torch, it's gone. It's on its way. Charlie, I'll go back to you. See you later. Thank you very much.
Oh, Charlie, the lovely messages, and that's a real sense um, we've had here this morning of talking to the many hundreds of people who turned up. They turned up from 40 this morning, from 4:40 this morning. Here they are. <laughs> They've had a lovely time. Here they were very, very early in the dark. I want to speak to the, some of the people here, but lots of people very proud that it should come to Cornwall. A morning, all of you lot. I'm going to ask your name and what you like about the Olympics. Okay, so first of all, what's your name? Elliot. And how old are you, Elliot? Ten. Ten. Where Are you from near here? Yeah, I'm from St. Just. Okay, fine. And uh, are, you, are you a fan of the Olympics? Who are you a fan of? Uh, probably Tom Daly or Mo Farah. Really? So they're both potential gold medalists, aren't they? Yeah. Will you be watching it on the telly? Yeah. All the time? Yeah. Excellent. Your name? I'm Charlie Harrow. OK, and how old are you? I'm 13. 13. OK, so who are you going to be watching out for? Um, Jessica Ennis. Really? So why Jessica? Because she's a really good athlete and she shows what she's made of. Fantastic. What, what sport do you do? Um, football and judo. Ah, that's impressive. And you are called Jess, aren't you? Yeah. How old are you? I'm eight. You're eight. And who, who will you be watching at the Olympics, do you think? Jessica Ennis. Jessica Ennis. I should have guessed that, shouldn't I? Brilliant. And what about you two? How, who, who are you and how old are you? I'm Jodie. Yeah. I'm 14. OK, and who are you going to be watching out for? Uh, Jessica Ennis. Jessica Ennis. She's got a lot of fans down here, hasn't she? <laughs> yeah. What about you? I'm Emily Harry and I'm 15. Yeah. And I like Tom Daly. Tom Daly. That's very interesting. Um, so, will you be? Are you excited about the Olympics, you lot? Yeah. 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 And why did you? Why did you decide? What time did you get up this morning? Half past four. Half four. I know all about <laughs> half past four. It's kind of early. Were you excited to wake up that early? Yeah. 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 Because we get to see the first torchbearer that's in England. Yeah. And did you see him? Yeah. yeah. Did you get? I know that that um, he, Ben Mainsley, when he was walking with it, he was letting everybody touch the torch. Did you get to touch the torch? No, no. no I took videos. Did you? Do you know videos. what? We can see if we can pictures. find pictures. You took pictures, did you? Yeah. Do you yeah. think you'll remember this for the rest of your lives? Yeah. Because yeah. it's one in a lifetime. Oh, that's and we won't be able to see it again because it's only once in a lifetime chance. Well. You never know, you might get it in, I don't think I'll get it in my lifetime, but you might get it back in your lifetime. Um, have any of you managed to get tickets at all? No. no. Do um, you care? Do you still be watching it on the telly all the time? Yes. yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Have um, you been fantastic? And do you think it'll inspire you to do more sport? I know you're a bit of a rugby player. Yeah. Any other sports you might take up because of the Olympics? Um, have you running. seen the BMX bike? Oh, running. Have you seen the BMX biking? Yeah. That's yeah. good too, isn't it? Um, brilliant, thank you very much. What are you going to do for the rest of the day? Um. <laughs> Go and have a rest, I yeah. think. Yeah. Thank you very much. Lovely to see hey, you. And I thanks. hope that Tom Daly and Mo Farah win. That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Thanks, guys. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank you. Thank you. Back at 8 o'clock, if I can keep them quiet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Real party atmosphere Thank down you. there. Back with you a little later on. Sunshiny down in Land's End. Don't Hello, very good morning to you. I'm Louise Minchin, live from Land's End in Cornwall, where we're following the Olympic torch as it's begun its 8,000-mile journey around the UK. An hour ago, the first torchbearer Olympic gold medal winner, Ben Ainsley, started the relay. Actually, pretty emotional to be honest. I mean, you know, so much effort's gone into getting this uh, the Olympics here in London um, from so many people, and it means so much. So, uh, very, very proud for everyone involved. Absolutely, so many people have turned out here this morning at Lands End. Many people really proud that Cornwall should be the place that the torch starts this relay. 8,000 miles, 8,000 people over the next 70 days, and they have loved it here, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, it's Saturday the 19th of May. Also ahead, the Eurozone crisis takes center stage as world leaders meet at the G8 summit in America. And I'm here in Windsor, where today thousands of servicemen and women will gather to honor the 60-year reign of their commander-in-chief, the Queen. Chelsea fans head to Munich, hoping to see their team lift the Champions League trophy for the first time. 
Very good morning to you. This is a breakfast special from Land's End this morning where the Olympic torch relay has started. The flame arrived here in a helicopter just before 7 o'clock this morning and then it was walked down to the sign here at Land's End where it was passed over to Ben Ainsley, three times gold medalist, to start this extraordinary relay which will go over 8,000 miles over the next 70 days. It arrived in Caldrose last night Let's have a look at the moments of its journey so far. This report from Andy Moore. A naval rescue helicopter carried the Olympic flame from its overnight home at Coldrose in Cornwall past the cliffs and surf on its way to Land's End. And there the flame was transferred from a lantern to the Olympic torch. There we are. The first bearer was Ben Ainsley, the three times gold medal winning sailor a man who learned to sail in Cornwall and won another title in the county only yesterday. And after just a few hundred metres, he handed over to Tassie Swallow, a young local surfer. The flame arrived in the UK yesterday on a plain painted gold and nicknamed the Custard Comet. The honour of lighting the Olympic flame on British soil fell to a man who helped bring the games here and hopes to compete in them. The flame lit by the rays of the sun in Greece will now be carried around the UK by 8,000 torchbearers. As many as 9 million people say they want to see it. The flame and its three backups had come from Athens in specially designed lanterns safely cradled on the front seat of British Airways Flight 2012. Well, I'm scared to touch them right now because obviously we're, we're mid-air and we've got the, uh, the flame next to us, but it's, um, you know, it's special. They're, it really is. It really is uh, you know, a proud moment for, for everyone. The flame is now on its journey around the UK, through more than a thousand towns and villages and almost every corner of the country on its way to London. Andy Moore, BBC News. Hundreds of people turned out this morning to see the moment that that flame was handed over to Ben Ainsley and he appeared really emotional actually and just stood there having photographs, all the rest of it, it was handed over and then walked through the crowd slowly letting people in the crowds touch the torch. A little bit earlier, I managed to catch up with him and ask him what it was like. Oh, I'm really very proud for the whole nation, really. It's a fantastic moment. It's such beautiful weather here. So many great people have turned out. And, uh, yeah, just really proud for everyone involved. Um, but, uh, this has all started off. Uh, show, show us the torch. Yep. So this is it. Um, it's actually quite heavy. <laughs> it's really you didn't have to go yeah. far, did you? Yeah, yeah, but it was, uh, yeah, it's great. And um, tell us about that moment. Were you, were you a little bit nervous when they were lighting it that it wasn't going to light, or what were you thinking? Um, yeah, it, it was just actually pretty emotional, to be honest. I mean, you know, so much effort's gone into getting this, uh, the Olympics here in London um, from so many people, and it means so much. So uh, very, very proud for everyone involved. And, of course, you're sort of from round here, so how does it... You know, people are very yeah. proud to have you as the first torchbearer. Well, yeah, it's great for Cornwall, isn't it, to uh, start off, kick off here in Land's End. Um, you know, so many old, old friends around here. Um, so, yeah, I'm very, pr very proud for Cornwall and, and for the nation and uh, such an exciting period now in the run-up to the Olympics. How, how's the training going? I mean, yesterday, you, what, you became six-time again world champion. Yeah. Fantastic No, it's news. great. So, yeah, we had world championships uh, that went very well, but uh, really uh, the main goal, of, of course, this year is the Olympics and getting the preparations right for that with, with not very long to go now. So. Um, what's it going to be like um, as an athlete competing here in the UK and, you know, possibilities, yeah. fingers crossed, of a gold medal right yeah. here? Well, I think this is just a, an indication of what it's going to be like for, for everyone competing. You know, such strong home support, it's just fantastic, you know, the atmosphere here and around the rest of the country. And, of course, the torch is uh, a great uh, way to get the, that Olympic fever going mm -hmm. around, the, around the nation. So, uh, very exciting. Um, ben, what I loved about um, when you were there, you were very calm. And then you, you let everybody touch the torch as well, didn't you? Which, did yeah. you know you were going to do that? No, I you didn't. You know, it was not, not scripted, didn't it? They said, you know, you can run, you can sprint, you can walk. Um, so yeah, I just felt, uh, you know, I think the Olympics is for everybody, so it's great for people to be able to, to get up close to the torch and feel it and feel a part of it. Well, that was Ben Ainsley talking to me a little bit earlier, and what's been extraordinary actually is talking to Jonathan Edwards as well. It's actually the athletes 
are pretty emotional. We'll talk to one of the other torchbearers in a few moments' time. But the journey has begun. Let's have a look at where it will go over the next few days. The torch starts its 70-day journey here in Land's End. 8,000 torchbearers will carry the Olympic torch through 1,000 cities, towns and villages, passing landmarks like Snowdon, Giants Causeway, Dublin, the Angel of the North, Edinburgh, Stonehenge, and then, of course, it will end up in the Olympic Stadium in London. Most of the torchbearers will carry the flame for about 300 metres near to their local community so friends and family can go along and cheer them on. The youngest torchbearer is 12 years old and the oldest is 100. What I want to do is show you where the torch is right now. It left here, I think it must have been about half an hour or so. Ben Ainsley and then of course we have these kisses and that, what that means is when one flame lights the other and the next person takes up the torch relay. It is going to be a quite a logistical organisation. I've been speaking to some of the organisers here today and here you have the next torch bearer ready to go. They are surrounded by the torch security team. They are trained officers um, who will be with the torch throughout the whole of its journey. And what happens is when it arrives at the town or city, it then goes back into that little gold lantern, which you saw right at the start, if you were watching with, the, with us this morning, that came out of the helicopter. It goes back into the gold lantern, the flame, and then it stays with the police officer overnight. So you can see a lot of security surrounding the torch, and I think they're just waiting to set off again. But what's been very striking is everybody's been really taking their time this morning. This morning. Uh, we will speak to another torchbearer in a few moments, but the moment, Charlie, I'm going to hand back to you. See you in a minute or two. Louise, thank you very much. Torch relay well underway, Louise. Absolutely. It left here, I think it was about half past seven this morning, so they've gone quite a distance now. Of course, it was Ben Ainsley who very calmly was the first person to leave here, the sign behind me, and I go on his way. He went about 300 yards to Tassie Swallow, who was the second torchbearer. Morning to you. Other person really importantly involved in all of this uh, this morning was Chris Whittington, the pilot, Whittington, of the pilot of that fantastic helicopter, rescue helicopter. Tassie, what was it like, that moment when you, you had to take the flame? Were you worried? Uh, it was absolutely amazing. I was really, really nervous. Um, it really helped having my mum, my dad, uh, my little brother and sister, my boyfriend, his family. And the crowd, the support of the crowd was crazy. Um, I've always known that I've had a few fans back home with my surfing and that, but this is a whole new level and I can't thank people enough for being out there today. And, and they're all me. here behind us holding yeah. up <laughs> your banner there. Um, tell us about the torch. I mean, what does it feel like? What's it like? Let me have it. Yeah, well, it's actually it's surprisingly it? it's quite light. Um, it's quite top heavy though, so it's definitely a two hand job. But yes, okay. Uh, yeah, it feels it feels it feels really really good. And and when you went when you got the torch, you walked slowly. Had you thought about what you were going to do? Or? Um, well, I'd seen Ben coming in, and I thought, okay, I'll go and walk quite slowly. That's what Ben's done. <laughs> and then the moment caught up with me, and I think I ran a little bit too fast. But um, I wouldn't change any of it. It was absolutely amazing. And a proud moment that it's here in Cornwall. Yeah, definitely, really proud and. I was so grateful to have been chosen as number two to run on my home turf and with all the people here, um, everyone's local really and mm -hmm. it felt amazing, they're all shouting my name and supporting me. Oh that's lovely, just tell us quickly, you're a surfer and you want, you'd like that to be an Olympic sport one day, would you? Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that'd be ideal, I mean it's hopefully going to be a trial sport in 2016, they're right. talking about it at the moment, um, but who knows, from there hopefully it'll be an Olympic sport, it's definitely worthy. Fantastic. Um, Chris, you, you've held your nerve this morning. You were flying the helicopter, the rescue helicopter, as it That's came right. in. How was it? Uh, it was unbelievable. Absolutely speechless. Um, an experience I'll never forget, I'm sure. It was brilliant. And did you feel a kind of real sense of responsibility? Absolutely. We're representing, uh, obviously, the Navy um, and starting off the uh, UK's torch relay, so it was, it was brilliant. It really was. Were you nervous or were you just calm, cool and collected like Ben Ainsley was? <laughs> Probably the most nervous I've ever been in my life. Really? <laughs> yeah. was it, well, that's a bit scary, flying, flying a helicopter nervous, is it, or was it, it was okay? It was fine, obviously, nervous doing the day job on a, on a regular basis, yeah. but we're used to that, whereas this was completely different. And you're a rescue helicopter pilot, that's, that's what correct, you do yeah, in your day right. job? Fantastic. You'll remember this for the rest of your life, will you? A absolutely, undoubtedly. When are you taking it back? Is it? Uh, probably a couple of hours after we've had a bit of breakfast. I think. Everybody's enjoying it. I shall leave yeah. you two to go and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. I'm going to look at the crowds here. It has been fantastic. From very early this morning, you were all here, weren't you? <laughs> 
most lovely atmosphere and what was really touching, um, I'm sure maybe if you've been watching Breakfast this morning, you saw Ben Ainsley uh, walking through the crowds and letting um, them touch the torch as he was on his way. Let's speak to a couple of them. Kate and Barbara. Morning, ladies. Morning. You're looking lovely, Thank I must you very say. Much. Um, yeah. Tell us where you're from and why you've come here. Uh, I'm from Pendeen and we came here because really it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to see a bit of history. Yes, absolutely. What yeah. about you? Exactly. Oh, I come from Trewellid, which right. is just another way down yeah. the road. And um, yeah, exactly the same. <laughs> Add a bit of sparkle. Yeah. Have a bit of fun. Um, there's been. Well, are you surprised by the amount of people who came out today? It's or? wonderful. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I sense there would be a lot, but when you get here and you're part of the atmosphere and part of the crowd, it's yeah. it just makes it worthwhile. You have certainly added to the atmosphere. Tell us Thank a little you. bit about the costumes. Um, we just like dressing up, fun. basically. It's for fun. We and find charity. Yeah, work. charity work. It's for yeah, charity. Yeah, yes. lots of promotion stuff. Um, and yeah. tell me, did you did you get to see the torch properly? You got a good view. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. We stood on a table. It was great. Oh, that's a very good yeah. idea. Um, tell me, um, your advice to people, because it's going all over, uh -huh. all over the country and, and the UK. Where, what would your advice be to people? Get up early, get yes. it if yes. you can. Yes. Yes. Do, do, do grab, grab the moment. Yeah. Why? It's special, is it? I don't think it'll happen certainly in my lifetime again. And I think you know it doesn't hurt anyone to get up early in the morning, does it? <laughs> Just get up and get out there and see it. It oh. really is a worthwhile experience. Fantastic, lovely. Thank you very much. Thank for coming you very to see much. You, thank you. It'd be great Bye. to see you. Um, it has been the most uh, lovely and very relaxed atmosphere here this morning. We spoke to a couple of guests. Everybody's looking after each other and making sure that they keep their places in the crowd. So really, really quite, an, quite a reception for the uh, torch relay. Apologies uh, for that uh, picture. I'll hand you back, I think, to the studio as you take that picture of my makeup bag. Tommy. We like to see behind the scenes, Louise. That's what we like to see. And I'm, I'm tickled by the pilot. We were all looking very closely at his badge on his uh, on his uniform, which said Dick Whittington. I don't know if you noticed I that. I missed that. Yeah. I'm glad you're watching carefully. We're all no, watching carefully. It looks lovely down there. <laughs> Thank Thanks you, very Charlie. much. Just picking up on uh, some of the thoughts. Obviously, the focus on Cornwall this morning. Is Hello, very good morning. This is Breakfast live from Land's End with a, a special program this morning because the Olympic torch has arrived here this morning. I've actually just been handed it. Can you believe this is the first one? Ben Ainsley was signing autographs and he said, could I hold it? I'm holding it. It was, of course, lit here this morning. It arrived in a helicopter and then was walked down to the sign behind me where it was handed over to Ben Ainsley. I think we can take live pictures, actually, from the media vehicle. Um, it's on its long journey. It's going to travel 8,000 miles, 8,000 different torchbearers, and they've all been chosen, nominated by different people in their community. They're in Penzance at the moment, and uh, as you can see, running happily. It's been an extraordinary atmosphere, actually. Many hundreds of people have turned out. It's a very kind of low-key but very excited people to have this here in Cornwall. And of course, it is passing through a thousand different places in the UK, so it will be coming to somewhere near you. Um, as I say, earlier this morning, about 7.30, it arrived here at Land's End, and it was lit when it came out of the helicopter very carefully by one of the torch security team, and uh, we saw this moment when uh, Ben Ainsley took the torch and then very carefully and calmly left to start its extraordinary journey. I'm surrounded, actually, by Olympians, as you are. Jonathan Edwards is here with me, as is Ben Ainsley. <laughs> Do you think um, I should give that back to you now? No, you I can keep odd. it. It's all right. Oh, That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. An amazing moment. You took it very calmly. Were you nervous? I was, actually, yeah, pretty nervous, I have to say. It was, uh, goes without saying it's, uh, you know, I've never experienced anything like that again. It's such a special moment for everybody involved and uh, just very proud to have the Olympic torch on its way. And honoured to be number one. Here it is on your, on your, on your, you can see it here on your, on your chest. Number one. Was that a proud moment to be the first person as well? Oh, well, it was great for me personally, but, you know, more importantly for the whole nation, it's fantastic that, uh, you know, we can see it. You saw how everybody was able to get up and, and, and feel a part of the Olympics, get close to the torch. And that's a great thing as it goes around the nation now for people to really get involved and get the atmosphere going. Um, Jonathan Edwards, you obviously have your own gold medal. He's got three. He's got three, I, mean, I know. You know um, you're part of the whole organising team. Yeah. Did you feel quite emotional when you saw Ben there? incredibly emotional. I think Ben was a perfect start for Torch Relay. I mean, he's three gold medals, one of our greatest Olympians ever, and yet genuinely, hum I think, humbled by the moment. And I, it was, I was like kind of holding back a tear, I really was, it was, uh, I thought he did a fantastic job. And the fact it was just really, you know, kind of slow and 
everybody here, and, and there was one guy I spoke to who had come down from Leicester this morning, and to give the crowds here that, that kind of moment, rather than you sort of rushing by mm. in a sort of half sprint, I thought was <laughs> just, just the way. Had no, you thought great. that through? Could you just let everybody go and hold the torch? You're not, uh, not, not at all, really. It wasn't scripted. They, they, the guys involved said, well, you can do what you like. So um, um, it just felt great to get to, for everyone to, to feel involved, I think. And that's, as I said, great as the torch goes around the country now for everybody to get involved with the Olympics. Um, you already have just the mere three gold medals already. Mm. You're a champion. Um, what will it be like if you can win one here in the UK? Well, I guess, you know, that would be uh, an incredible moment for any competitor to uh, win an Olympic gold medal on home soil or for us and, and sailing on home waters. Yeah. Um, that would so be amazing. So you know them very well, don't you? Uh, yeah, I do. But, uh, you know, this is today has been amazing, but it's definitely back to reality very quickly and back to training and trying to get the preparation right for the Olympics. Because you were even competing last night, weren't you? Yeah, we finished, our, <laughs> we finished our World Championships yesterday, yeah, down in Falmouth, uh, which is where I grew up and learned to sail. So that, that has been a, an incredible period, couple of days for me. Yeah, and, and, and great now with this, with this kicking off. Um, I understand, Jonathan, we can see the 17th runner here. I mean, the, the thing about this journey is it's, it started here in Cornwall, but it is going through a large swathes of the UK, isn't it? It's going to be, will it be special for people? Is it special to carry it? Is it special to see it? I think it is. The majority of the torchbearers have been nominated by people from the local community, so they will be running through, uh, seeing people who have supported them, they're extraordinary people who have you know, volunteered in their community, whatever it is. So I think that makes it special, and as we've seen today, it's a great moment for a place to shine, you know, there's world it's wide attention, so that's really good. And it's when the, the, the moment the Olympics comes alive where you live as opposed to you know maybe going to, to watch Ben at the sailing or going to the stadium to watch Jess Ennis or Philip Sudowu. Uh, so it kind of fulfills the whole kind of vision of it being a UK Games mm. as opposed to just a London Games. Um, and you know some people are skeptical they'll say oh it costs a lot of money you know will there be a legacy and um, this is part of changing that is it the 70 days? It is I mean I think what you'll see over the course of, of these 70 days is a lot of the projects which have started up because of the Games coming out and showcasing the things that they've been doing for the last four, five, six years. Mm. So sports festivals, cultural events, um, the education programme, the Getz Education programme, which is in over 20,000 schools, which have been te teaching the Olympic and Paralympic values. They're very involved uh, with what's going on. So it's a great moment, I think, to celebrate all the work that has been happening for the last seven years. OK, um, and just to talk about, I mean, Ben's obviously a very cool and calm character, but what about uh, for all of the GB Olympic um, uh, people who are going to take part, um, how much pressure is there on them, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> with, ben, with Ben standing here, I, I don't quite know what I want to say. I'll block his ears. Yeah. I mean, massive pressure. If the, you won't have competed under pressure like it. That's the reality yeah. of it. And, and I said, you know, when we spoke a little bit earlier, remembering Cathy Freeman in Sydney, so kind of the darling of the Australian public. And when she crossed the line, having won the 400 metres, she just looked completely exhausted. It was almost like mm. she was in a daze. Because... You know, London's different because you, it would have been on your mind for uh, probably since Jack Rogg mm. said the Games were awarded right. to London. But if it had said Paris, it would have been a completely different build-up, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You wouldn't have had it quite front of mind. And that's what it's been like for all, all the British athletes. Now, as an athlete, you've had some pretty special moments. What is it? Six World Championships. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, something like that. We're <laughs> yeah, um, to World Championships now. Yeah, right, okay. We've got three no, 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 golfers. No, no. <laughs> One tour, three legs. <laughs> yes. yeah. what, no, what will you take out of today? Will this be a really, you know, a really memorable moment for you? Do you think? Oh, absolutely. It's uh, probably the biggest moment of my life, I'd have to say. Um, uh, and such a great moment for, for everybody. We're talking about um, the Olympic Games on our on our patch. That's very special. Okay, I am going to regretfully have to hand this back to you. Oh, I, there okay. is only one person it can go back with. Ben, lovely thank to meet you. Jonathan, yes. thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you, Ben. And of course, um, on the BBC website, you can get all the information about all those different torchbearers, their stories, and where they are, and when the Olympic torch relay will go close to you. It's been a real pleasure to be here this morning. The crowds are kind of thinning. I think they're going to watch it in Penzance, where it is now. And I, I love the fact, Louise, I don't know if you can hear me, I love the fact that on the sign behind you, it, there's, it actually got an arrow pointing in the right direction for the Olympic relay in case they thought of going the other way, directly into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That it's been lucky. lovely down there. Beautiful weather, lovely crowds. You, Thank you. Uh, time now is uh, 8.38. A quick reminder of the other main stories this morning.